afternoon, Orion. Morning. It's so great to be back in person after three years for our 20th Max. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I mean, how cool was that video? Let's give them a round of applause. Now, the excitement and energy here is so palpable. I, I cannot even tell you how cool it is to be back here. And we're joined by over 6,000 people in this room and thousands more from around the world for the largest creativity conference ever. So thank you so much for being here. Now, speaking of numbers, this is here for milestones, both for Adobe as well as for me personally. We celebrate 40 years and our 40th anniversary in December. We could not be more proud of the impact that our technologies have had on every aspect of human society. From inventing desktop publishing, to revolutionizing imaging and design, to pioneering electronic documents, to advancing animation, gaming, and video, and now to leading in 3D, immersive digital marketing and commerce. We are focused on empowering everyone everywhere to imagine, create, and bring any digital experience to life. It's incredible to actually reflect on the evolution of the company and our community over this time. We focused on continuously delivering groundbreaking innovation, radically expanding our aspirations, and relentlessly focused on bringing the best of Adobe to all of you. But it really is your commitment, your passion, and your creativity that have inspired us to reach higher. So on behalf of everybody at Adobe, thank you. Thank you for the incredible collaboration over all these years. This year, I also celebrate my 25th year at Adobe. And growing up, I wanted to be a journalist. I'm blessed that at Adobe, I've been vicariously able to participate in the publishing industry. And as I reflect on how the company has evolved, there are four experiences that stand out for me. When I joined the company, InDesign was the first product that I worked on. At that time, Quark was the de facto publishing platform, but we were convinced that there was an opportunity to create a brand new modern digital publishing. We released InDesign in 1999, built from scratch with a plug-in architecture to encourage contributions from every one of you. We tackled some problems that existed in those days to serve the global community, including DoubleByte with a codename project, Hotaka, specifically aimed at the Japanese market. And it was those early strategic decisions that helped us make InDesign the digital publishing powerhouse that it continues to be till today. The seminal acquisition of Macromedia in 2005 was a result of our expanding our aperture to tackle both the print and web with a common platform. We think it laid the foundation for delivering all of our offerings across multiple operating systems as well as devices simultaneously, forever changing the aspirations of the company. Together, we expanded into print, into web, gaming, animation, and video. But success for us was really about bringing two vibrant cultures together with a focus on serving millions of customers with an integrated offering. And Creative Suite 3 was a result of this monumental effort. With the tectonic shift in cloud computing and mobile, we resolved to reinvent ourselves again with the launch of Adobe Creative Cloud in 2012, which allowed us to deliver continuous innovation and engage with you in entirely new ways. The transition of transitioning from desktop software to software as a service was a first, not just for Adobe, but actually for the entire industry. And I'm so thankful for your support, your engagement, your encouragement through this entire journey. Now we are focused on breaking innovation to make our products more powerful, accessible, and fun. And we think we have this unique opportunity to learn 
from the millions of people who use our products every single day to the hundreds of assets that are being created through the power of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Adobe Sensei, which is our AI and ML framework that launched in 2016, is one of our most important investments. And you'll hear more today from both David and Scott about how Sensei is all about anticipating and solving problems that have vexed us for decades. Our goal is to continuously build on these learnings and our investments to invent the future with you. And there are three key strategies that we're now focused on. Adobe's mission to democratize creativity is about enabling anyone, anywhere to tell their story, whenever and wherever inspiration strikes. With every product launch, we try to expand the lens to make creativity more accessible to more people. And we're bringing the power and precision of Adobe Magic to every category, including imaging, illustration, design, 3D, and immersive. We brought Lightroom to mobile, desktop, and web, offering powerful capabilities to precisely capture, edit, and share photos across any device. With Adobe Scan, we've turned mobile devices into powerful scanning and recognition tools, enabling PDF for the mobile era. Most recently, Adobe Express enables consumers, communicators, and creative pros to create this incredible, amazing content bringing powerful capabilities from Adobe Photoshop and Premiere and After Effects and Acrobat to Express to deliver the best of Adobe to customers at any level. Our vast portfolio of industry-leading products are empowering billions of people to tell their stories in richer and more varied ways than ever before. But creativity for AI is not just about product innovation. It's also about unleashing the power to do social good. Today, we're announcing the Adobe Express for nonprofits, which provides Adobe Express for free to the over 10 million global nonprofits to help them engage donors and drive greater impact. <laughs> for us, creativity has always been about a fundamental collaborative and social endeavor. As we've innovated across surfaces, media types, and devices to engage an even broader set of creators, designers, and developers, we're building the future of collaborative creativity on an even larger scale. Collaboration for us has always been about harnessing the power of the community in an asynchronous fashion. And given the new hybrid work reality, we're turning our attention to solving synchronous collaboration. The acquisition of Frame.io and Workfront were key strategies for us in advancing this effort across both video as well as marketing campaigns and their workflows. But a few, years, a few weeks ago, we were absolutely thrilled to announce our intent to acquire Figma, a leading web-first collaborative product design platform. Thank you. And together with Figma, we have this unique to advance product design, accelerate creativity on the web, and reimagine the future of creativity and productivity. Adobe Magic for us is about unleashing entirely new innovation that amplify the power of human ingenuity. We're using Adobe Sensei to allow people to free themselves from mundane tasks and deliver absolutely new superpowers. Speech to text, for example, in Premiere Pro that uses the power of AI to automatically generate captions to videos, or Liquid Mode in Acrobat, which uses AI to automatically make responsive PDF on mobile devices. Sensei-powered features like content-aware fill and neural filters in Photoshop that are making Photoshop even more accessible, smarter, and easier to use across surfaces. And our goal is to make AI your co-pilot in all of your creative endeavors. But as a company that serves billions of people, we are also extremely serious about the responsibility to ensure that our technology is making a positive impact. And through the Content Authenticity Initiative, Adobe is partnering with over 800 organizations globally 
to combat misinformation, as well as provide attribution and provenance for creators. Thank you. But for us, we deliver the best of Adobe when we do it together with every one of you. We're really grateful for the engagement and connections that we see across our over 30 million strong Behance community. Thanks to the incredible partnership with over 300,000 global contributors, Adobe Stock now offers nearly 300 million images, videos, vectors, and fonts to give millions of creators the world's best assets. And with Adobe Max, what started out as a small gathering of web designers and developers, we now bring together millions of creators from every corner of the world, representing every creative discipline. And through the content that you create, share, and monetize, you are amplifying our collective impact. Thank you. Thank you for continuing to inspire our over 27,000 employees around the world to create products and experiences that change the world through digital experiences. I think it's an incredibly exciting time to be a creator, and we're humbled to partner with you to push the art and science of creativity forward. The world is truly your canvas. And my ask of you is to keep dreaming bigger. Challenge us to help you make you realize your creative visions and ultimately make the world a more colorful, vibrant place. But thank you so much again for joining us today. And with that, I'd now like to welcome David Wadwani, president of Adobe's digital media business. Thank you. Welcome to Max. Well, good, good to hear it. It's amazing to be in person after all these years. And, and I want to start by just echoing a little bit of what Shantanu said. Shantanu's journey at Adobe over the last 25 years in many ways has mirrored my very own. Uh, I attended the very first Max. Anyone know where that was or how long ago it was? Salt Lake City, I heard someone say it. Oh, it's. It's an Adobe person. Uh, it was Salt Lake, Salt Lake City 20 years ago. Uh, and it's amazing to see in, uh, how much of this industry has changed in those 25 years. But the thing that I remember most was that I was blown away by the people that I met. And at the end of the day, that's why many of us are at Adobe today. Because we love the people we work with and because we're in awe of the people we work to serve, all of you. We're inspired by you because your creativity moves the world forward. You bring the past to life. You imagine the future. You ignite our imagination. You shine a light on the things that we need to discuss, and you help your companies elevate their voices in a crowded market. And of course, sometimes you just make us laugh when we need to do it the most. What you do makes the world a better place, and our sole focus is to push our tools and our services forward 
so you can keep breaking new ground. What makes this moment so special is that we're living at a time where content and creativity and design has never been more valued, where content is fueling the global economy, where digital content consumption is exploding, and where virtually every business needs a digital presence. Of course, this creates amazing opportunity for all of you, but it also creates real challenges. The vast majority of you say that it's really hard to keep up with the demands on your time and that you have less bandwidth to experiment and learn new things. And that's what we want to focus on today. How can Adobe help you take what's in your mind and make it with higher pr production value and in less time? So you can advance, you can take advantage of the opportunities in front of you, and so you can spend more time surprising and inspiring all of us with what you create. In a minute, I'll invite Scott Belsky, who runs our creative products, on stage to walk you through all the incredible innovation his team has been working on. And when he does, it will be very easy to get caught up in all the amazing technology. And you should get caught up in it. It's kind of mind-blowing. But beyond the raw technology, I want you all to keep a few things in mind. First is that our goal, as Shatnu said, has always been to give you the ability to accomplish anything in your mind's eye with the most powerful creative products in the world. And over the last few years, we've been investing more and more in Adobe Sensei, our AI engine. I like to refer to Sensei as your creative co-pilot. You're already using hundreds of features that are powered by Sensei uh, to automate mundane tasks, and we'll be announcing more of them here today. So you can express your creative ideas more quickly, especially given the increasing demands on your time. But of course, the promise of having a creative co-pilot isn't solely about productivity. It's also about possibility. As our research uh, director, Gavin Miller, puts it, creating with AI can feel like dreaming out loud. And we're working on new capabilities that can take our core flagship applications to whole new levels. Imagine being able to ask your creative co-pilot in Photoshop, to add an object to a scene simply by describing what you want, or asking your co-pilot to give you an alternative idea based on what you've already built. It's like magic. Imagine if you can combine Gentech with Lightroom so you can ask Sensei to transform night into day, a sunny photograph into a beautiful sunset, move shadows, or change the weather. This is all possible today with the latest advantage, advantage, uh, advances in generative technology. For those of you not familiar with generative AI, it can conjure up an image simply from a text description. And we're really excited about what this can do for all of you. But we also want to do this thoughtfully. We want to do this in a way that protects, empowers, and champions the needs of creators. So here's our commitment to you. We're approaching generative technology from a creator-centric perspective. We believe AI should enhance human creativity, not replace it, and it should benefit creators, not replace them. We also recognize that today's generative AI offerings fall short of your needs as creators. So we're investing in research and product design that incorporates it into your existing creative apps and works with your existing creative workflows. And we believe that the rise of uh, generative AI calls for industry standards. As Shatnu mentioned, we'll work with our communities and our partners in the Content Auth Authenticity Initiative to develop standards around ethical and ethics and digital provenance. So in short, we want you to be excited about the technology that we build and how we go about building it. Another way we're going to help you manage the increasing demands on your time is by giving you more explicit control over when you choose the power and precision of our desktop applications and when you want more speed and ease. And nowhere this, will this be more obvious than when you try Adobe Express. Express is our new service built from the ground up to empower all of you to quickly create content that stands out. It's included with your Creative Cloud membership 
So you can decide when you want the power and precision of our core desktop applications and when you want the speed and ease of Express. And last, but certainly not least, we're doubling down on collaboration. Creativity is increasingly a team sport, whether you're collaborating with other creators or asking feedback from stakeholders. You'll hear a lot about share for review capabilities today from Scott this morning. Available today across video, design, and imaging. And it's going to be a huge time saver for all of you. And speaking of collaboration, as Shantanu mentioned, you may have heard of this little acquisition we entered into uh, an agreement to acquire Figma. Dylan Field, co-founder and CEO, a few years ago, and had the opportunity to spend a lot of time with him over the last year. He's truly a special leader. And it turns out we had a shared dream of what we could do together. Dylan will be joining us later this morning to share his thoughts on how we at Adobe can accelerate their work in ideation and product design, and how together we can reimagine the future of imaging and video and illustration and design and more. The opportunity ahead for all of you and all of us is astounding. At the same time, the demands on you has never been greater. And all of us at Adobe are committed to supporting you, whether it's by giving you, the super, giving you superpowers, providing you more options for speed and ease, or making it seamless to work together. So with that, please welcome Scott Belsky to show it all to you. And Scott, come on up. Thank you, David. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, I'm really excited to be with you all this morning. It just feels so good to be in person and to share the very latest from our teams, all of which is designed to make you more productive and inspired and ultimately outfit you to do your very best work. From breakthrough technology and performance improvements to new ways to work together and to create for entirely new mediums, we've got a lot of fun stuff ahead. All of these new features and capabilities that you're about to see fall under three themes. Performance and superpowers, or precision and superpowers, speed and ease, and collaborative creativity. So let me provide some very quick context on each of these themes, then we're going to jump right into some exciting demos and announcements ahead. And we'll start, we'll start with precision and superpowers. So our teams are on a mission to advance every creative category through better performance, and powerful new features. For instance, look at video. You know, in Premiere Pro, new features like automatic color correction and one-click remixing of music tracks are making the entire video process much more efficient. In Photoshop on the desktop, we made it even simpler to select complex objects and work with assets imported from Illustrator. And in Photoshop on the web, available now in beta, we've launched new editing, compositing, and retouching capabilities to the product. These features, and many more like them, help you create a decision and control you're accustomed to, but quicker and easier. Our teams have also been laser focused on improving performance. So we still, but we have made significant improvements across Creative Cloud over the last year in both performance and reliability, and this momentum will continue in the year to come. We're also focused on making you much more productive with new superpowers, as David was talking about, fueled by Adobe Sensei. So these AI superpowers take over the mundane and repetitive work, giving you more time to explore and to iterate. For instance, in Photoshop, you can get rid of a distracting object just by clicking on it and hitting delete. Sensei automatically fills the space so you'll never even know it was there. Of course, AI isn't only about saving time. It's also about doing things that you previously didn't even think were technologically possible. You can turn day into night or summer into winter with neural filters. You can replace a moving object frame by frame all at once with content-aware fill and After Effects. And that next generation of AI that David was talking about earlier will actually help generate assets for you. We also want to outfit you with one more superpower. That's becoming increasingly essential for creative professionals these days, and that is the ability to create for 3D and immersive experiences. 3D makes designing creative marketing assets and new products better, faster, and cheaper. And getting involved in 3D creation now prepares creators and companies to develop for the immersive experiences of tomorrow. 
So today we'll show you some incredible updates to our Substance 3D collection, and we'll introduce you to a breakthrough new product that will accelerate the creation of immersive experiences. Okay, so I've talked a lot about you know, some of the ways we're helping with precision and control, but let's face it, you know, not all product projects require painstaking detail. Sometimes you just want to do something super quickly and as easily as possible. And Adobe Express is really becoming the perfect app for those situations. When you need to quickly you know, edit an image, trim a video, make a GIF, or a GIF for those of you that like to be wrong, uh, <laughs> or, uh, or craft the pub, thank you, right? Um, Express is really the perfect tool. And with Express, you can give anyone in the company templates and tools to create a social media post that follows your brand and design standards to a T. So lo and behold, you actually can retain creative control in this new world after all. Let's talk about collaborative creativity. Every creative project these days has a lot of stakeholders, right? Clients, marketing colleagues, developers, fellow creators. In fact, these days, Disney tries to compete with better design and creativity. You are all at the center, and everyone else is becoming your stakeholder. But the friction of collaborating, sending around these huge files, keeping track of endless amounts of versions, converting from one format to another, it's just always been too much. There has to be a better way, and we are building it. All right, so are you ready? All right, I'm ready. Demo gods, are you ready? I hope so, because we're live. <laughs> we're going to start out in the world of design, beginning with Illustrator and InDesign. You're going to see new ways we're accelerating your work in Illustrator and how we're making handling type a breeze in InDesign. And you'll see one major new collaboration feature across our flagship products I just want to point out. Whenever you see Share in the top right corner of your application, you now have actually two great options at your fingertips. First, you can invite others to edit your document with just a URL. The people that you're working with you know, can access this project on the desktop app or jump into Photoshop on the web and soon Illustrator on the web. But the second, a brand new option, is share for review, a super efficient way to get feedback from all stakeholders on your project with just a click. With share for review, you can share design with anyone just by sending a link. Your colleagues can view your work in any browser, make comments, and even point out specific parts of the design that need changes. And the reviewers don't need Creative Cloud. In fact, they don't even need to be logged in. And you'll see all their comments start flowing right back into the application you use to create the design, where you can address it without ever disrupting your flow. So again, no more craziness, exporting to other formats, you know, tracking versions, all this stuff. Share for review really does make that old world obsolete. OK, so with that, all right, we don't like friction. <laughs> So with that, I'm going to turn things over to Danielle Morimoto and Brielle Alexander to show you Share for Review and other cool new features in Illustrator and InDesign. Thanks, Scott. All right, I am really excited to be here, and I'm sharing the latest features across both InDesign and Illustrator. I'm working on a travel journal design in collaboration with Christine Heron, a previous Adobe Creative resident. I'm here in InDesign, and I have most of the pages already laid out, but there's still a few adjustments that I'm looking to make. So let's jump right in. This spread is looking really good with a lot of illustration elements, so I want to add in a bit more photography. I have this photo that I took on my phone. I airdropped this in, so it is an HEIC image. Previously, I would have had to convert this in order to use it, but InDesign now supports modern formats like HEIC, JP2s, et cetera. All right, so I also want to add in a photo to this bottom left-hand corner. I don't have something exactly in mind, so I'm going to head to the web to Adobe Stock. Now, Adobe Stock gives me access to millions of images, videos, audio, lots of different types of content. I've already done a quick search here for a chipmunk because this is an outdoor page, and personally, I'm obsessed. So as I scroll through, I'm just looking for something where white text is still going to be legible on top of the image, maybe having the animal off to the side a little bit. So something like this could work really well. Now, I can download this right now. Way, but instead, I'm going to save this directly to my CC libraries. That way, Chris access to it as well. So I'm going to head back to InDesign and go to my libraries panel. Here are all of those shared colors and graphics, and here's that image. So I'm just going to go ahead and place this in and then scale it on down. There we go. 
All right, so as soon as I scale this down, I am noticing the text still isn't working perfectly. You know, I, I want this text to ideally wrap around the side of the chipmunk. So in order to get that effect today, I would take this photo into Photoshop, select the subject, generate a path, bring that path into InDesign. All of that takes time. So instead, I'm going to use the brand new text wrap around object feature and use select subject. Now this analyzes my photo and it automatically found the subject for me. I'm gonna bump up the padding just a little bit, and that looks great. So again, this is the brand new text wraparound object feature, and it just makes things a lot simpler. So I do have a page that is a little bit more text heavy. I haven't styled this at all yet, just copy and paste. So typically when I go to style text, I might start with like my header text, go over to my properties panel, and start to look through all of my different font options, and. There's a lot of them, uh, and so it takes a lot of time. I might play with the scale of the text, and once I like something, I'll create a style. But that's just for the header, right? I now need to do that for my subhead and my description copy and my list. So instead, I'm going to get a baseline using the brand new style packs. Now, these are pre-packaged with different font pairings, and they use machine learning to look at my text and actually identify all of the different areas for me. There are multiple of these that come with InDesign, but where this is super powerful is you can create your own. So in paragraph styles, I can customize my own style packs, and that's exactly what I've done. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply one of these right now. Again, it's using that machine learning, looking at my text, identifying the section, and just like that, it's changed the entire design. This looks really good. It is you know, not my favorite design for this particular style, so I'm gonna apply another one here. That's so again, this is the brand new style packs, and it just makes things a lot easier when it comes to getting started and exploring new ideas. All right, last thing I want to do while I am in this file is actually to a graphic that I have. So this is an Illustrator file that I have embedded in InDesign, so I can just edit the original, and it will automatically launch Illustrator with that graphic. Now that I'm here, noticing a few things I still need to do, I have this list at the bottom here. I need to make this into a bulleted list. Super manual to do this today. If you know, you know. So with one click, I can make this a numbered list, lettered list, bulleted list, and there's also advanced stylings. I'm also gonna head back over to my libraries panel and just pull in one more graphic here at the bottom. Perfect. So the main thing I actually wanna do while I'm here is to this larger graphic I have. I have this rope that's on top of all of these other objects, and instead of having it behind or in front of everything, I really want to make it look like they're all weaving in and out of each other. So in order to get that effect today, I would you know, take this rope, copy it, mask a little section, copy the rope again, mask a section. You get it, I'd repeat that over and over again, and whew, you do not want to see my layers. So instead, I am going to use the brand new intertwine feature. So with my lasso tool, I'm simply going to circle the areas where I want these objects to swap places. Now, I'm doing this really quickly, because <laughs> I'm on stage, and <laughs> it's still doing a fantastic job at identifying the sections. What's great about this is, if I want to adjust something, I can come in really easily, do that, and it's non-destructive. So again, I really quickly was able to make this look like it's weaving in and out of each other. This is super powerful. This is the brand new intertwine feature. All right, I'm going to save this file. I'm happy with this, and I'm going to head back over to InDesign. Now, I didn't have to export anything out of it. searching for it on my desktop. It's automatically updated here. Now, I do want to take a look through the rest of my designs again. And this is the part of the process where I'm really happy with my designs, but I would love to get feedback from someone else. Now, typically, I would have to export all of these pages out of InDesign, but collaboration is now built directly into the product. So I'm going to use the brand new Share for Review feature, and this allows me to create a web link that I can share with others to get feedback on my designs. Right now, I have it set to invite only, which is perfect, because I just want a few people to see this for now. I can always make it public so anyone with the link can access it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my friend Bria, and I'm really curious what she thinks about the designs, and I'll go ahead and send it off to her. 
Hi, a friend of Danielle and senior program manager on the team, and I get a notification right away in Creative Cloud on the web. I see it's from Danielle asking for my thoughts. Let's take a look and see what on. Alrighty, it looks like the travel journal that we've been collaborating on, and it looks really, really great since I've last seen it. I love the style packs that she's incorporated here. I think it looks really good, but I am noticing that we did forget to license this image. And the really cool thing about Share for Review is now you can mark up directly in the document. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a pin where I've got the feedback and say, let's license this. If I can spell license. There we go. Alrighty. Up next, we did talk about changing this flag here to a tree. So once again, I'm going to mark up directly in the document, circle the area where I've got the feedback, and say, let's use a tree here. All righty. And as I continue to look through it, I love the weave that she's been able to incorporate here. I think it looks really cool. But I am noticing that we landed on New Zealand as our final country, but we talked about a few others in our collaboration together. So once again, I'm going to put a pin. I'm going to tag my teammate, Jason Levine and ask Danielle and Jason, how do we land here? Alrighty, and as I continue to look through the document, I think it looks really, really great, but that is the awesome power of Share for Review. No Slack messages, no emails, just you and your content. Back to you, Danielle. <laughs> Bria, all right, so I just got a notification that Bria left a few comments on the designs. She's also standing right there. Uh, but I'm back here in InDesign, and there's now a built-in review panel where I can see all of the comments that she's left. This is, I have a lot of pages. I don't have to go searching for every single place where she left feedback. With one click, it takes me directly to that spread. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this first update. It's a really quick thing that she wants me to do. And then I'm going to just resolve the comment to kind of get it out of my way. Um, definitely should license this later, but I'm going to take a look at this last comment here. It looks like she's curious how we landed on this content. We've been going back and forth for like a while now. Uh, it happens, but I think I'm just going to reply back to her and tag my coworker, Paul Tranny. Here we go. Got to delegate this and see if he can look into this. And I'll reply directly here. And the great thing about this is all of the feedback that we have is now consolidated around this one document. This is the brand new share for review feature, and it truly changes the way that I work with other people. This is just new features coming to both InDesign and Illustrator. Thank you. So, uh, so thank you, Danielle and Bria. As you can see, Intertwine's pretty awesome. Um, share for Review is a game changer. I mean, share for Review is available today in Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, and will be coming to the rest of Creative Cloud soon enough. And you're starting to see AI make its way into all sorts of little crevices of products, you know, starting with style packs, for example, here. Those are just a few of the new features in Illustrator and InDesign. But over the last year, the teams have released so many other features and improvements in real time, including new ways to work with 3D objects, new options for all things text, and many others. So again, please dig into the latest versions of Illustrator and InDesign. OK, we can't talk about our mission of creativity for all without talking a little bit about Adobe Express. We have so many, all right. We have so many experts in the room who are deeply specialized, right? Whether you're in video production, a designer, a photographer, an illustrator. But nearly all social platforms are mixed media these days, and most good posts are some combination of video, photography, graphics, and more. So creative pros today have to be capable of doing many different things and to do them fast. You may specialize in video, but you may want an illustrated thumbnail image that grabs people's attention for YouTube. Or you're a designer who wants to provide tools for your non-designer colleagues to create social media posts without your help. Or maybe you just you know, have to get something done super quickly. Here to show you how Adobe Express can be a time saver for creative professionals and their teams alike is Paul Tranny. Paul. Thank you so much, Scott. I'm so excited to show you Adobe Express. It's a web and mobile app for quickly creating social content banners, flyers, just to name a few, and it comes with thousands of professionally designed templates. Uh, this helps you jumpstart your design, but you might be wondering, like, as a creative pro, why would I use Express? Well, just to knock out content quickly. Graphics of all types using my creative, because this has to look like 
my work. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to quickly knock out a social post for the same project Danielle was working on. So let's start with this template. Let's jump in here. It's all about what is in your travel journal. Hopefully everybody can mark Adobe Max off your list. And let's go ahead and add a shape behind that text just to make it stand out a little bit more and everything just reflows and snaps into place nicely. Now when it comes to fonts, you have access to all the fonts in the Adobe Font Library. All 20,000 fonts are available to you. Probably all judging me on my font choice, aren't you? Shame on you. I'd expect nothing less, actually. Uh, you have recommendations, and so does Express. So using AI, based on your design, it'll serve up appropriate fonts. So no Comic Sans here or Papyrus, because it's not, it's not an avatar poster. It's a travel journal, and Express knows that. All right, I need to replace the background really fast. It's so easy to do, and you have access to millions of images with Adobe Stock integrated. So we can search on scenic. Let's get a nice scenic background. Background. Don't worry, I'll get it. There we go. And uh, it just returns about 3 million images, so let me slowly scroll through each one of these. Bear with me. Oh, let's just go with that one. So notice how it doesn't ask me for credits, and it doesn't give me a watermark. Uploads the actual high-res version, and check this out, like you have access to premium images as a Creative Cloud member. So we could add or remove filters. We could detach it from the background to move it around freely if we want to. Really, you have creative control. So tens of thousands of fonts, hundreds of millions of images. Can I say, I don't know, has all the images in my mind, and we're just getting started. But it also has your stuff with Creative Cloud Libraries integrated. This happens to be a shared library Danielle has access to, all my Photoshop and Illustrator work. Take that, drag it out, and start using it like so. Nice little Illustrator collage. We could just rotate it and do something like that. And you guys know what I'm doing. We're going to put this right on this travel journal, and everything kind of snaps into place nicely. We'll grab, an, grab another graphic, and uh, this image, just to give it a human element. Now, for this image, I just need to knock out the background, right? That's so easy to do in Express. Check this out. Remove background quick action. I don't need to open this up in Photoshop. I don't need to do anything, to be honest with you. It does it for me, right? Piece of cake. And done. And that's actually one of the many quick actions you'll find like throughout Express. So let's have the Creative Cloud Libraries and Quick Actions just really making common tasks easy. Now, let's talk about branding, because this is not on brand. I just picked a random font, to be honest with you, and uh, it's not uh, using the right colors. And Express makes branding easy. I love this. I'm going to go to New Browser. You can set up your own brand like I've done. You add your colors, uh, your logos, even your own custom fonts for you to use this content anywhere. That's my favorite part right here, inviting other people. Other designers, non-designers, marketers, that annoying person's always asking you for the logo. Yeah, stop bothering me. You have the logo, right? All you have to do is go to that project, and all they have to do is click Apply Brand, and we can shuffle through different colors of that as well. It changes the font, gives me the logo. We can move that over. So I love it. Express really puts you in control of the brand for anyone to use, really anywhere, even old Todd from marketing. All right, so I made this at one size. I'm actually creating at just one size. So let me switch over to this project. Lovely animated project. It's new to Express. is the ability to add as many at any size you want. Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, Snapchat. If you're using Snapchat, I don't know. I don't. Maybe you are. You can knock out those graphics. And look what it did. It reflowed that content as well. That's some Adobe magic right there. But it's not on brand, right? This is, my, this is my fun part right here, is jumping in and just applying brand to all of that. So any screen, right? Any size for any platform. I'm drunk with power right now. <laughs> all right. Let's go back to this design, because I'm finally ready to publish. Publishing is easy. Go to Publish. Select the platform that you want, like I'm doing right now. Really, anyone you want, and as many platforms as you want. We'll jump in there. We'll select all those. We can add a caption. We'll just add an emoji right here, take a preview of our work. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Looking great. 
And uh, this is my favorite part right here. Check this out, a scheduler, built-in scheduling. You pick the date, you pick the time, it puts it right in there. Uh, looks like I'm working. Social media is doing its thing, even on the weekends. You can move this around, you can unschedule stuff for publishing later. But I lied, this is actually my favorite part. Using Express for the scheduler alone. So you could take your Illustrator, your Photoshop content in this case. No need for a separate service. We'll, go ahead and we'll just give it a little thumbs up and let's, let's just push this out maybe two hours because I hear there's this really cool keynote going on. Schedule that and done. So creating, scheduling, publishing, my creative Adobe Express really is the best kept secret in Creative Cloud. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Paul. So, so as you can see, Express now has an incredible feature set, highly curated assets and templates, and it's really becoming an essential companion for modern day creativity. I'm just really incredibly proud of this team. All of the features you just saw, libraries integration, social media content scheduling, all of it is available now. And just a reminder, if you're a Creative Cloud member, you have Adobe Express. So check it out, express.adobe.com. So in the coming year, you're going to start seeing Express in more places across the web. Integrations, wherever you want to edit an image or a video or insert your brand or access the creative power of Adobe Express inline. And one of those integrations we're announcing today is with Wix, the cloud-based website development platform. So through a seamless integration between Express and Wix, users will be able to edit any media on their websites, including adding effects, animation, and more. And this is really just the first of many partnerships where we're trying to bring creativity wherever you need it on the web with Express. Now, what you saw in Paul's demo is really just the beginning. Express is evolving super fast. And based on your feedback, we have a lot more that's coming in the pipeline. Let me just give you a quick glimpse of the future so you see what is in store. So Express is going to become the world's most agile multimedia editor. You're going to be able to edit video, text, animations, audio, images, vectors, whatever you need for an inventive and engaging social media post. And this really outfits you to create in all major formats for all the key social platforms more quickly than ever before. And there's no need to do everything yourself. We are bringing real-time multiplayer collaboration to Express. So, you know, you and your friends or coworkers can just create together and always see what each other are up to. It's really the perfect solution for any, every shared project. Express has dozens of great editing tools, but sometimes you're just going to want to go further, further in a product like Photoshop or other creative cloud apps to really make your project stand out. Well, no problem. Seamlessly open your project in another app like Photoshop make your edits, and then just as easily open it back in Express. We are building Express and all of our products to work together without friction, so you always have this choice. We are also, we are also bringing new AI superpowers to Express, including the ability to generate a background or an object in your scene just by describing it. And we are delivering breakthrough technology to get this. Create a unique font with the power of generative AI. So you start, yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> you start with any Adobe font, and then you give, an Express, you give Express a suggestion, like electric cables, or I don't know, orchid petals, and then Express will generate a one-of-a-kind font that matches your scene perfectly. I mean, right? <laughs> you will not find that on Adobe stock. So, when you need power and precision, you've got our flagship applications, but when you need speed and ease, Express is here for you and the rest of your team. And the best part, these products work beautifully together. The Express team is constantly shipping, so keep an eye out on uh, Express for these new features and more coming soon. Okay, so let's now shift gears. We're gonna talk about Photoshop. And you all know this. With Photoshop, anything is possible. We are in an era where brands are only as inspiring as their latest content. Everyone wants to stand out, and creativity ultimately unlocks self-expression. And so we need Photoshop at our fingertips, wherever and whenever we need it. And over the past few years, we have been on a mission to make Photoshop available everywhere. In 2019, 
We announced Photoshop on iPad, making it possible to work on a Photoshop project on the train or wherever you find yourself in the world. And last year, we showed for the first time Photoshop on the web, which lets you and your collaborators work across any browser together. When we launched Photoshop on the web, it was mostly useful for allowing people to view a project alongside some, you know, a few light editing tools, but the Photoshop team has kept innovating, and over the last 12 months, they've continually rolled out new features, making Photoshop on the web much more powerful. Now, of course, Photoshop on the web doesn't have every tool and capability we've added to Photoshop over the last 30 years, but that's no problem. Photoshop is now a system across desktop, iPad, and web. And with cloud documents, you can open up your file on the desktop and access the full power of Photoshop whenever you need it. So let's hear a little bit about what the Photoshop community has been up to over the past year, and then Elisa Wood will demonstrate the flexibility and power of Photoshop everywhere. So we're starting now. Creative, I'll start that again. Sorry. Yeah. The last couple of years was hard for most people, but it like gave me a big drive to create. Currently, my art is more physical. Prints, laser cutting, and really bright colors. El poder eh, acceder al imaginario de todo lo que creado otras personas, ¿no? Otros grandes ilustradores. Yo la estoy retomando y la estoy volviendo a volcar al mundo, ¿no? The ways in which that I approach my art is shifting. I developed a piece, it transformed into a shoe. I've been taking items from our compost bucket and making sculptures with them. Having a community is super important. Humans are not meant to be alone. The best work I've made has been combining my talent with other creative talents. It makes me really hopeful to see other people waking emotions with their art and also changing the world with their art. My work is very tactile and crunchy. I'm just being honest with where I'm at, so I want my work to reflect that. The nuances of art can draw people in, even people who might not be receptive otherwise. I would look at having protagonists reflect different lifestyles. We need more voices out there. Be true to yourself because the seed of honesty always brings beautiful flowers. Allow yourself to just like shape change. Hi, I'm Elisa Wood, design manager on the Photoshop team, and today I'm going to share with you what our team's been working on. So let's go. Here I am, oh, thank you. So here I am in my email, and Serge just shared with me a link to today's demo document. So I can just click this link. It's going to take me right into Photoshop on the web beta. I don't have to install or download anything. I can get started right away. And on the left, I have tools. On the right is the layers panel where I can add adjustments, effects, masks. So a lot of familiar faces from Photoshop on the desktop. But now it's all right here in the browser. So it's pretty exciting. And the first thing I want to share with you guys today is now we have full fidelity raw image support here in the browser. So I can come to my place tool, choose a raw image, let's select this one, and it's going to take me right into Adobe Camera Raw here on the web. And with a few toggles here, I can start to adjust the look and feel of this image, playing around with all that data that's in this raw image. So if you've used Photoshop on the desktop in the past, or maybe Lightroom, you will understand why it's pretty exciting that now we have this here on the web. So now that I'm done, what do I do? I just hit done, and it takes me right back into my document on the web. Now, I can just scale and resize this to get it right where I want it. That is looking pretty good. All right, so that's a raw image that we edited in the browser. Now, the next thing I want to do, because this is Photoshop, is add a few more images, right? I want to do some compositing. I've got this gnarly tentacle that I found on Adobe Stock, and I want to combine it with a few more things. There's some moss, and I need to get rid of the background so it looks like it's sitting on the tentacle. Now, to do this, I could come here and choose any of my OG selection tools, like Lasso, um, Magic Wand, but I can also just hit Remove Background, and it analyzes the image and removes the background for me. And you might think, that was pretty much already cut out. Well, this one is not. There's a sky, there's some grass, there's general shrubbery in the foreground here. And when I go back to my selection tool, choose remove background, 
It analyzes the image, and again, it removes it. Perfect. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and it's Photoshop, so it's all non-destructive. I can come back in, whoops, and keep editing here. I'll just choose the moss mask, change my color, there we go, and use a brush to start brushing back in some of this. So you can see how remove background is a really good way to jumpstart a composite workflow, and then you can use core Photoshop features like masking and brushing right here in the browser to make it your own. Get creative with it. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Normally I might do a little better job, but I'm in front of a few thousand people. So here we go. <laughs> um, so that's looking great. And one more thing I wanna do before moving on is point out I've got this new bar here at the bottom you might have noticed, and it's called our contextual taskbar. And what it does is it hi highlights options that are you know, your most likely next step. So if I make a selection here, you see the options change. Now I've got options for masking, content aware fill. It's things that I probably might want to reach for next. And if you're someone like me who sometimes forgets where things are in the UI, it can come in handy. It's probably right there. And you might even find out about some new options that you didn't know about. So contextual taskbar, going to save you time, make it easier here in Photoshop. Now, like I said, Photoshop on the web is great, and it's really, really handy for doing some quick editing, some lightweight work, but maybe you want to move over into the desktop. We've got you. It's super easy. All I need to do is push open in desktop here from my header. And when I do that, it's going to take me right into Photoshop on the desktop. It's going to launch my file right where I left off. All of my layers are here that I created in the web. Even the layer that I was working on last is selected. So it's really, really easy. No friction here. Now that I'm here in the desktop, I want to check out the updates that we've made to Sky Replacement. So with my background layer selected, come to Sky Replacement. And again, it analyzes the image, masks out everything, replaces the sky. And this year, the team has been doing some phenomenal work so that now the edge detection and lighting is even better. So it really looks like this is the original sky in the image. So amazing results from the sky replacement team here in Photoshop on the desktop. So this scene is starting to look pretty good. And I want to add one fa final touch. And this is going to be a gradient. So if you've used gradients in the past, you might be used to thinking, OK, before I get started, I need to create a new layer. And then I need to make sure that my preset is set right and I have the right gradient selected, because if I don't, then I'm going to have to redo it. Well, you know, and then you find yourself swiping. You're swiping and you're swiping. It's a lot of trial and error and a lot of swiping. It's kind of like dating. Well, it can be, <laughs> you know, happily married now. But, um, but with the new gradients, I can just come in here. I swipe, and I get this great on-canvas UI. I can keep moving things around, scale it down, change my preset. So that's pretty nice. Let me just open this one. There we go. And you can see how fun it is with this one especially. It can do a little dance. Now, like any other layer, I can come over here, choose a new blend mode, maybe scale down the opacity. And another fun thing about these new gradients is because it's fully editable, I can come over here and remove a stop just by pulling it off and add a stop by reclicking. I could even come here and change the color of the stop. So it's nonstop fun here with editable gradients in Photoshop Desktop. And just like an adjustment layer, <laughs> thanks, guys. Um, just like an adjustment layer, it comes with its own mask, so I can start masking out portions of the gradient that I don't want, and I can keep moving it around fully editable. So it makes gradients in Photoshop much more powerful and precise. It's what you expect. All right, so I'm pretty happy with where I'm at with this, and I want to share it to see what others think. And just like Danielle and Bria showed you in Illustrator and InDesign, we can do this now in Photoshop. I have Share for Review right here in my Share panel. And I've already created a link, and I've already shared it with a bunch of different collaborators, but they're not seeing what I'm doing in real time. Nobody's looking over my shoulder. There's no hovering art directors here. They only see what I want them to see when I want them to see it, and that's now. So I'll push the update content, and this is pushing the latest to the link. So now everybody can see and share their comments, their thoughts, their concerns, and it, all of that comes right here into my commenting panel. So I see that uh, there's a lot of love, a lot of people are digging it. There is some thought that maybe some of the beams are a little much, so no problem. I understand that. I can remove some of the beams. I'll just come back in again to my fully editable gradient, pull some of these off, and it's done. All right, so that's the full consolidated comments here with Share for Review in Photoshop. And that's what we've been working on across Photoshop on the web and desktop. Thank you so much.
So, uh, so thanks, Elisa. So Elisa showed some great new features in Photoshop, but there's just not enough time to show you all the latest and greatest. This team has been constantly rolling out new features that both speed up your work and let you do things that were just never before possible. I mean, for example, we didn't get to it, but neural filters. You know, these are those AI-powered features that do complicated and sophisticated edits with just a few clicks. Among some of the latest ones, just to point a few out, you'll find depth blur, which automatically tweaks the background of your photos to help your subjects stand out. Landscape mixer, which lets you combine two landscape images, change seasons, or even change the time of day. And colorize, which quickly brings color to any black and white photograph. Elisa also showcased our new collaboration features in Photoshop. So whenever you need to share that moment in time with a client or a stakeholder, you now you know Share for Review is there for you, shipping today. OK, we're going to now switch gears. We're going to talk a little bit about photography. I mean, everyone sees the world differently. And photography enables us to see the world through the eyes and minds of others. I feel it's the images of people places and moments that capture the texture of our lives. And it's only when we kind of look back through it all that we realize how much we've really lived. So it makes sense for everyone to be able to take their photography to the next level. And much of the magic comes from what you do after you take the shot. How do you adjust the colors to capture a mood? Or use light and shadow to direct people's attention? Or edit a portrait to bring out your subject's unique personality? Lightroom is what professional and amateur photographers around the world use to make their photography truly their photography. Over the last year, the Lightroom team has released dozens of new features for desktop, mobile, and web. Many of these use AI to actually you know, easily select and improve specific parts of your image, the sky, the background, individual people, even the specific parts of a person's face. Or you can use one of the many new Lightroom adaptive presets that improve your whole image with just a click. So we were fortunate to spend some time with photographer Michael Aboya and see how he uses Lightroom to capture portraits of people and communities in his native Ghana. Let's take a look. I've always had that feeling where I wonder why I was born. I'm here for something, but I just couldn't figure out what it was. I've always wanted to be a photographer. When I found that that was my true purpose, I didn't hesitate. Add energy to it, though. One, two, go. As a photographer and an artist, I try to focus on those aspects of finding out what makes us feel alive. When you focus on that, you get the true essence and you put that into a story and that comes together as an inspiring piece. Before creating an image, I have certain elements that I'm looking for. Most importantly, it's in the facial expression. When I take an image, I know immediately that's the story right there. And most of the time, I can't wait to get home and then start working on that image. Bring your head closer. Perfect. When you look at the images, then you see what makes us who we are. I see love, I see happiness, I see freedom, and I see somewhere that I can call home. At the end of the day, I really look forward to being inspired and making someone's life a little bit better than it was. It's pretty, pretty awesome. And thanks again, Michael, for letting us just spend an entire day with you, watching you do your thing. 
Uh, I want to repeat one thing Michael said. You know, as a photographer and an artist, he was saying, I try to focus on finding out what makes us feel alive. I think it's so well said, and also it's a beautiful mission. You know, an amazing, it's just an amazing thing to capture photographs of those moments for the rest of us. I feel like that's so much of what that art is all about. Photography is also becoming a more collaborative medium. When we have an adventure, a trip with friends, a wedding, any sort of event, we want to share our images with everyone involved. So I want to make sure you know about Lightroom albums, which really makes photo sharing super easy, but it also allows for group editing. So your friends can choose their favorites and make their own edits and improvements. It's really a, a great way to preserve the memories, but also enhance them in a uniquely collaborative way together. Um, earlier, David mentioned the Content Authenticity Initiative. So a little bit more about this. CAI, as we like to call it, it's a little easier off the tongue, uh, now has more than 800 members, is developing open source technology available to all that helps establish provenance and attribution of a piece of content. So people who create media can choose to add content credentials that show who made the content and how. And our vision is a world in which much, much more of the content that's created and shared has content credentials attached from anywhere that you make it. And that media, and the media that doesn't, you know, or the media that sort of strikes us and raises questions, we at least can question, you know, where did it come from if it doesn't have the content credentials attached. So adding provenance and attribution is a real powerful solution, we think, to some of the modern challenges that we face today. You know, in a world of social media and misinformation, content credentials can help us determine who made what and how it was made and whether it can be trusted. And I'm proud to say that two leading camera manufacturers, like a Nikon, are implementing content authenticity into two new cameras, making it easy for photographers to attach content credentials to their work from the moment of the shot. And new use cases of CAI continue to emerge. In the wild, wild west of NFTs, content credentials helps prevent fraud by making it actually easier to see who created a piece of digital art, not just who minted it. And in the world of generative AI, Contra credentials can help us show what was created by a human and what was created by a machine. And as generative AI becomes a bigger part of the creative process, we feel this information will be essential. Because the story behind a piece of art, the people who made a creation and how it was made, has always been important to viewers and collectors. Conda credentials will help ensure we always know whose story we are experiencing. Okay, now let's talk a bit about video, the storytelling tool of our generation. Stories told in video inspire, sell, and drive change in a way that very few mediums can. But there's nothing easy about making video. Editing is time consuming, special effects have a steep learning curve, and video is one of the most intensely collaborative mediums. So our video team has been focused on making editing and production quicker and easier through AI and other innovations you're going to see in just a few minutes here. And over the last year, we have integrated Frame.io, the preeminent cloud-based video collaboration tool, directly into Premiere Pro and After Effects. So with Frame.io, you can say goodbye to the clunky old way of reviewing video that involved tons of emails and vague time-coded stamped comments and whatever else. With Frame.io, you know precisely what frame a comment is referring to. Reviewers can even actually circle a part of the video that they're concerned about. And with Frame.io, security comes first. You always know that people who are viewing a video are authorized to do so. Along with integrating Frame.io, we've also added features to Premiere Pro that will make video editing a lot faster. So Karina Anglada is here with Jason Levine, and they will show us in a moment how to, you know, just how we're streamlining the video workflow end to end. But first, let's take a quick look at what video artists have been up to over the last year. I think 2022 has been a real challenging year for a lot of people. Just made me feel even more passionate about what I do as an editor. Creativity is necessary to be flowing around us all, to feel better as people. Mmm, tone. I think the thing that motivates me most to make recess therapy is creating content that breeds empathy, is positive, and makes people feel better. Ugh, I really gotta make that. It kind of dawned on me, like, wait, I have a responsibility to put out good stuff in the world. 
We just want to make the kind of work that we didn't see growing up. Stories about queer people, more inclusive stories. It's just really exciting time. One of our roles has been guide a very hard conversation, but make it fun. The best solution that the average person could do is to try other groups of people's food. We need art to reflect and make more easily digestible some darker things that might be happening in the world. Now the challenge is being your most authentic self. I think that our life experiences will always reflect on the things that we're creating. We want to celebrate as many types of human experiences as we can as a smaller studio. Non-corporate safe. Do not talk about these at the water cooler topics. Those are my favorite. <laughs> One word I would use to describe 2022 would be resilient. I'd say it was quite volcanic. Like a fork goes into like four or five like different paths out of one stem. Driven. The word would be no. Freedom. Evolutionary. Ooh. <laughs> My name is Karina Anglada, and I am so excited to share some of the updated features and collaborative tools with just some of our video products. I'm here working in Premiere Pro, where I'm just about ready to share this video for review. But before I do that, I want to verify some of my graphics. So I want to call attention to the timeline here. I've got this lower third, which is actually a motion graphics template from Adobe Stock. Motion graphics templates are special because they're fully customizable, from the text to the colors to the size. And we have thousands and thousands of them, just like this one here, where again, everything is fully editable. But one of my favorite design elements to use are animated transitions like this one. Here we've got these cool effects applied to the footage, and everything is self-contained in this one blue clip. But if I were to make something like this manually, it might look something a little more like this sequence here. I've got six different video layers of light leaks, film grain, and if I wanted to make any adjustments to this, it would be extremely time consuming. Well, new to Premiere is something called media replacement with motion graphics templates. So if I wanna replace this first sewing machine shot and swap it with something else, all I need to do is a simple drag and drop into the Essential Graphics panel, and it's instantly updated on my timeline. So meter replacement with motion graphics templates lets me reuse my graphics, saves me so much time. All right, now I'm ready to share this video for review, and that's where one of my favorite features, Frame.io, comes into play. New to Premiere is the Frame.io review panel directly integrated into the platform. Frame.io is the best way to share and collaborate with others. It consolidates my comments and feedback, and it centralizes my projects and assets. So I'm going to add my friend Jason Levine to this project, and I'm going to upload this sequence directly into Frame.io. What's amazing is I can check this box, which ensures that my markers on the timeline here upload as frame accurate comments. So I'll upload this video, it gets sent to the cloud, and Jason is going to leave me some feedback. <laughs> oh. Hello, creative humans. It's very nice to see you all. So lovely to be back. Well, here I am in the browser in Frame.io, and uh, just like Bria showed you earlier, it is incredibly easy to add markups and comments, but more importantly, the most important thing of all, Frame accurate comments and markups right here. Yes, thank you, sir, in the back. And if you look down in the tools panel below, you'll see that we have very similar tools. You can draw or paint directly onto a singular frame of video, or you can use things like the arrow tool to call out areas like blown out highlights, or just calling attention to a specific region of your video frame. Any of you can do this. You feel me? <laughs> Been locked away for two years. All right, so let's tackle Karina's comments. The first one here is, how does this look? And I'm assuming she's talking about the general look of this. It looks lovely. I love the shot, but it does look a little bit flat compared to some of the other frames that I saw before. So I'm simply going to come down to the comments field here and type needs color correction or needs color correction, whichever it is. She will understand me. 
And that frame accurate comment will now be sent directly from here to the uh, review panel on Premiere Pro, and she'll be able to see that comment. Perfect. Let's go to the next one here. How is the audio? Now, we've been working really, really hard on this audio track. Uh, we went through thousands and thousands of songs in dozens and dozens of styles, all available, all available via Adobe Stock Audio. So I'm very concerned. I want to hear how the eventual mix turned out. I want to see how this really turned out. So let's take a quick listen and see. And it's beautiful, except that the music keeps playing and we've already faded to black. So she needs to now cut that track to fit the end of the video. So I'm simply going to come back down to my comments field here and say trim music to end of video and send that off. And that comment is now done. All right. Now for the last comment here, she's asking my thoughts on the animation. And no doubt, she's referencing that motion graphics template that you just saw moments ago. And I love this. I love all the effects that have been applied. I just love the whole look of this thing. But I seem to recall that in an earlier version, she used a different overhead shot, a shot of this sewing machine that was really, really cool. It really popped. Now, if you look in the top left corner of the browser here, we have this incredible ability in Frame.io to compare versions of different edits. And when I go into the compare version window here, let me just back up a little bit. Okay, now we can play this back. I can see exactly what, and there it is. There's the shot. There's the overhead of that sewing machine. That is the one that I want. It's version one. So I'm going to go back to the player here, back into my comments field, and say, please swap clip one with version one. <laughs> Great typing. <laughs> it's that editor reviewer thing. You, you get what I mean. Yeah. Friends, it is that simple. Anyone can do this. Anyone can review video, mark up video, and do it frame accurately. It is truly the best way, the easiest way, nay, the only way with Frame.io in the browser to send those comments right back to Premiere Pro and have them appear in your timeline. Thank you very much. Awesome. I see Jason's comments here in my Frame.io review panel, but it would be useful if I could see them directly on my timeline. So I'm going to go ahead and import comments, and boom, there are his added in green and my original markers in blue. And when I click each comment, it takes me to the exact frame where he left me the feedback. So here he wants me to need some color correction with an M, but I won't give him any hard time about that. I need to color correct this clip. Now, I'm not a professional colorist, so I need something to help me jumpstart the color grading process. AutoColor is a one-click color correction tool powered by Adobe Sensei Machine Learning that helps me do just that. I click AutoColor, and it instantly applies that color correction. What's amazing is I still have full control here with the sliders, and when I toggle the before and after, I see the difference is dramatic. So I get one-click color correction with auto color. I'll check off this comment, and here go to the next one, where Jason wants me to trim my music to the end of the video. And when I zoom out of my timeline, I see my purple music track from Adobe Stock is far too long for my video. Now what I could do is simply drag and add a fade, but that's being a little lazy, if we're being honest, and I take a lot of pride in my work. With the Remix tool, I can shorten or lengthen any piece of music to the exact duration I need. What's amazing is Premiere Pro is going to analyze the music, and it will preserve the beginning and end of my song. And it will show me what these transition edits are with these wiggly lines. So let's take a listen and see how it did. That was envisioned from your mind. It's really magical. Did you guys hear that transition edit? No, exactly, yes, applause, because the remix tool did the work for me, saving me so much time and energy, and that is the incredible power of the remix tool. All right, I have one last comment to get through, and here Jason wants me to swap out this piece of footage with another one, and again, just like before with media replacement, with motion graphics templates, all it is is a simple drag and drop, and it's updated, ready to go on my timeline here. All right, I'm ready to share this final version. But this time, I'm going to go back to Frame.io, and I'm going to share this as a presentation. 
This gives me my own custom branding. I have the option to password protect it, allow downloads, and when I click the link, it's ready for me to share with anyone. These are just a few of the incredible features and the new ways to collaborate. We cannot wait to see the work that you create. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Karina, and thanks, Jason. Ooh, all right. Uh, thanks, Karina, and thanks, Jason. So that is just a taste of the latest and greatest in the video tools. We've been rolling out hardware acceleration and other performance improvements, improved handling of graphics and titles, added new quick export features, and so much more. It's also great to see the integration of Frame.io, Premiere Pro, and After Effects really coming together to accelerate collaboration and sharing. More coming on that front as well. So now let's check in with Frame.io co-founder Emery Wells and team to hear about the latest developments in camera to cloud. This is a revolutionary technology that automatically transfers footage from a set anywhere in the world. So a set that's active, right? This footage then goes to the cloud in real time, so post-production can start before shooting has even concluded. Emery. Thank you, Scott. Since launching Camera to Cloud 18 months ago, we have heard from so many of you around the world about how impactful it's been to your work. Glenn Ficarra, the director of the hit series We Crash, said, Camera to Cloud has revolutionized our work. We can now view a rough cut of a scene before people even get dailies on other platforms. But it's not just films. Sports teams, such as the Golden State Warriors, are getting clips live from a game out to social media in minutes. And Red Bull Media House has shared that Camera to Cloud has allowed their team to decentralize post-production workflows for multiple outlets across countries and continents. We are super grateful for the dozens of partners who have joined the C2C Connections program, enabling a wide range of products to send assets directly to Frame.io. Today is an exciting day. We have two major new partners joining the C2C program, and I'd love to show you. That's right, the RED V-Raptor, V-Raptor XL, and Fujifilm X-H2S cameras will be the first cameras to natively upload to Frame.io with no additional hardware required. Fujifilm plans to launch in 2023, and the RED V-Raptor and V-Raptor XL will be available later this year. To tell you more, I'd like to introduce Senior Director of Innovation, Michael Cioni. Thank you, Emery. This is what we've been waiting for. A future that doesn't require shipping hard drives. A seamless connection from camera to post. Fujifilm X-H2S can upload raw stills and the Red V-Raptor and V-Raptor XLs can upload 8K raw or any flavor of ProRes directly to Frame.io with no additional hardware. In fact, you can do both at the same time. To demonstrate this, I'm going to ask Liz to join me up here and actually connect this Raptor XL to Frame.io from scratch. We're going to start in the media menu. From there, we see an entirely new way to connect to the cloud through network offload. We can enable that, and we see Frame.io as an option for connection. Once we hit connect, we get a six-digit code. Liz can now lift up her phone, and this is the Frame.io iOS app where she can enter that six-digit code. What's happening is Frame.io is establishing a secure connection link with the Raptor. We can see the red Raptor XL serial number. You see Liz's user and the destination folder where all her assets will populate. From there, she hits authorize, and we're done. That easily, we can connect everything to the cloud, and we could shoot a take. Don't think of the cloud as being solely about speed. Think about how the cloud increases flexibility and control. Imagine your camera raw and still files being instantly backed up and accessible through Frame.io's collaboration tools to anyone without downloading or shipping. As bandwidth continues to improve, the expectation of instant access to media will become a standard in every single workflow. And Frame.io Camera to Cloud unlocks it all. 
What we're seeing right here is the first ever automatic transmission of an AK RAW file and ProRes file with every ounce of available camera metadata. So you'll be able to upload your still, video, RAW, and proxy files directly into Frame.io straight from these cameras. We cannot wait to see how productions utilize this new workflow to unlock an entire new world of creative control. And now, we'll hand it back to you, Scott. Right, thank you, Emery and Michael. This is really an exciting breakthrough for the video industry as a whole, and it really is just a start. The roadmap for camera to cloud is pretty, pretty mind-blowing. So we've talked a lot today about collaboration, and that's because, as we all know, collaboration plays a central role in modern creativity. Creativity is now a team sport, and the first question many of us ask when we start a project is who are we going to work with? Bringing in more people doesn't just help distribute the workload. It brings in diverse new perspectives, inspirations, and ideas that are new to you. And by engaging more stakeholders, creativity becomes more central to every experience and to every business. The challenge, of course, is how to make all of this seamless and efficient. How do you efficiently brainstorm together, gather perspectives, and share work when your collaborators could be in any time zone anywhere in the world? That's why we've been working to bring seamless, asynchronous collaboration to all of Creative Cloud. Whether it's mood boards, mood boards on Behance for swapping ideas and inspirations and collecting stuff, Creative Cloud libraries for the sharing of colors and fonts and stock assets and other components that your team relies on and needs to stay in sync with, or share for review in Frame.io for getting feedback on the work you produce. And more to come, right? More to come that we need to, we need to do to support collaboration all across Creative Cloud and make it seamless. Let's take a look at how some of these capabilities are helping the team behind one of the world's most iconic brands. Coca-Cola is a brand that is 136 years old. We have Coca-Cola sold in more than 200 countries. The second most common word in the world is Coke, other than OK. It's a brand that people have an emotional connection with. The brand is much more than Coca-Cola. It's the Coca-Cola company, and we have $20 billion brands. Keeping that creative energy going is a full-time job. We are not a new brand, we are a legacy brand, making sure that whatever we do is respectful for what the brand stands for. We recognize and we pay attention to our consumers. We know they are constantly changing and they want something new. How do we balance the timelessness of the brand with the timeliness? So you have to make sure that you're relevant, fresh and interesting. If you make a mistake, the impact of that mistake could be big because just by the fact that the business is huge, the way the world works now is like everything needs to be delivered yesterday. If we had different tools for every agency we worked with in every region, we wouldn't get anything done with the speed that we need to and also the scale. We have agencies in all countries in the world, so it's not just one point of view. We kind of make sure that we include diverse point of views. This to me is a big challenge when you're dealing with global brands. All the 200 countries are doing work by themselves. It is challenging, but it's a good challenge, and it's a challenge that you know keeps us evolving the way that we design, evolving the way we work, and evolving the way we ultimately come up with our good concepts. If you look at the contour model, it says that design a glass silhouette that is recognizable even when it's broken in pieces. Coke Red doesn't change over 130 plus years. Someone posted in our chat, they said, what is the hex code for Coke Red? Answer came immediately, and it was FF0000. And I looked at it and I said, nope, it's F4, 0, 0, 0, 0. If you don't know it and you don't use it every single day, there can be version control issues. People know what something looks like so clearly, like our Spencerian script and our colors, you start to ignore it. Fixed and flex is actually something that we talk about, ensuring that some elements are fixed, but then where there's opportunity to flex depending on that market. We're not gonna change our logo. We stay true to that, but we want to remix it in ways that it's interesting to people. What I love is that the tools are all integrated. The moment that we go into motion, photography and imagery, this could all be part of the same experience that we're designing for Adobe Creative Cloud. The integration between the tools is perfect. Adobe is very centralized to everything we do, regardless of your design discipline. We all have this common tool that we use. When we're working with many different regions, you kind of look for that universal language. If we're literally speaking a different language, that I know if I get a file that I can open up and I can read it. 
it's really helpful for us to be able to share assets to anyone who needs them who don't have the fonts and the logos and the correct color palette. We use Frame.io for all of our internal reviews as well as our external reviews. It allows for input from multiple people at different times. We use a lot of different tools for collaboration and also libraries to keep all of those assets in one place. We want to have consistency across all the different user experience touch points. The work of hundreds of thousands of people that came before me have allowed for this brand to exist in the way that it does. It's our responsibility to carry that forward for the next generation. So uh, a quick, quick thank you to the Coca-Cola team for sharing some of your behind the scenes. All right, so we are going to talk a little bit more about collaborative creativity. Uh, Sean Tanu and David shared this morning just how excited we are to welcome the Figma team. Um, I have known Dylan Field, Figma's co-founder and CEO, for over a decade, and I have just long admired how their web platform, multiplayer capabilities, their extensive developer ecosystem totally reimagined the world of product design and development. Most recently, the Figma team released FigJam, which outfits any team across any company for ideation, whiteboarding, and new ways to collaborate in this hybrid world of work. Our teams are so excited about all there is to learn from one another, and we've got a lot of ideas about all the fun things we can do together. Let's take a quick look at Figma in action, and then Dylan will join me for a quick chat. Dylan, hey. <laughs> welcome to Max. Thank you. Uh, so for those in the audience who haven't tried Figma before, can you give a quick description of what Figma is and, and what do you think has made it so successful over the decade your team's been working on it? Yeah, absolutely. And Scott, thank you for having me. I'm so pumped to be here. This is my first Max. Uh, <laughs> thank you for welcoming me. So a bit about Figma. Uh, Figma is a platform for product development teams. And 10 years ago, we started Figma uh, with this belief that product design work should live in the browser, not just for efficiency, but also for more openness and for better collaboration. And this was a very controversial belief at the time. Uh, people told us that if this is the future of design, they were changing careers. Uh, but thankfully, it also headed and tracked to where the world was going. So we are and we are still, and we've talked about this a lot over the years, in the middle of a multi-decade shift uh, from a physical economy to a digital economy. And I think just as you look at the number of apps and websites being designed, that number has clearly exploded. Uh, and as a result, product design has become a way for companies to stand apart. People saw this and said, hey, I want to be involved in the product design process, even if they weren't a quote unquote designer. And as a web-based product design tool, Figma has tried to welcome them in. So today, product design is no longer part, uh, just one part of product building. It's also the brainstorming phase, and it's the research work that precedes it, uh, which is why we built a second product, which we shipped last year, FigJam. And FigJam is a whiteboarding tool that can also be used for brainstorming, ideation, diagramming. Uh, and so also can be about the code that follows the design process, too. Uh, and so we're really trying to make Figma into this end-to-end -end product experience. So it's important that Figma has autonomy within Adobe and that the design community really benefits from the work we do together. So after Figma joins Adobe, what are some of the first additions to the product roadmap that you're excited to tackle? And I'm curious if there are any specific requests from the community. Yeah, there is so much that I'm excited to do here uh, and so much I'm excited to build. So by collaborating with the Adobe team uh, and utilizing Adobe's technology, I think we're going to be able to build way more capabilities into the Figma platform faster. 
So first, Adobe has core expertise in a bunch of areas, uh, many of which we've talked about today, such as video, imaging, vector, 3D. Uh, and we know that working in these areas is also part of the product design process as well. Uh, but we don't serve that very well in Figma today. So one of the first things, uh, to answer your question, one of the first things that I think we'll do. Drum roll, drum roll please. <laughs> uh, Adobe fonts. Fonts. Uh, but intertwine today, that was awesome. <laughs> I think it might give fonts a run for money, so we'll see. I, I, I watched the demo, I was like, wow, that's amazing. I want that now. We'll chat backstage, we'll figure that out. <laughs> okay. But anyway, so we'll always keep listening to the community though. And of course, as people give us feedback, uh, we'll adjust accordingly. Awesome. Well, um, when you founded Figma, I remember you talking about this notion of eliminating the gap between imagination and reality. And I have to say a lot of the you know, founders I mentor, when they send me a link to the product they're building, it's, it's always a Figma link these days. Um, where are you in the pursuit of this? Yeah, so for me, closing the gap between imagination and reality, that means giving people the tools they need to get something uh, from their mind onto the canvas and onto the screen. And our vision is to make it so that product design is accessible to everyone. And that's part of why we created FigJam, to bring people into the product design process uh, from the start in a way that's easy to use, engaging, but also really fun. And looking ahead to our future opportunities with Adobe, even beyond product design, uh, we starting to start to reimagine the future of creative tools on the Figma platform. And of course, with a focus on collaboration, uh, as we discussed today. And I also think that we can, just, as we build these new tools, these new spaces, uh, it can start to bring the power of visual collaboration into that work for everyone. So, so much to build and really excited for this. So much to build indeed. Dylan, thank you so much for joining us today. All of us at Adobe are just super eager to start working with you and your team. Can't wait. Awesome. Hey, you soon. thanks so much. <laughs> All right. So, um, perhaps the fastest growing new medium of creativity right now is 3D and immersive. Over the last couple of years, we've seen the adoption of 3D design explode among companies and organizations, including Burberry, Nike, NASA, Ben & Jerry's, and many more. These companies are using 3D tools to do things that used to be done in more expensive and time-consuming ways, like creating marketing images for catalogs, websites, and ads without the need for traditional photo shoots. And they're creating renderings of new products that don't even exist to more easily test ideas with customers. Designers at Salomon, for instance, say that creating prototypes in 3D as opposed to having far-off factories creating physical versions has cut the time required by more than 60% and allows them to produce 10 times as many prototypes. Designers love the efficiency of 3D and exploring ideas more quickly, but 3D is about more than just efficiency. Anyone who has played a modern game knows the unique capability 3D has, creating these beautiful, you know, detailed and enveloping worlds in pretty much every immersive game that you've all played was touched with a Substance 3D product. As we look into the future, it's clear that immersive experiences, including those powered by augmented reality and virtual reality, will play a huge role in our everyday lives. So we have been building the Adobe Substance 3D suite to enable seamless production of 3D assets and experiences. And for those of you that are new to the world of 3D and immersive creation, it all starts with a 3D shape or model. Now, there's a good chance you can find a model to start with in our stock collection within the Adobe Substance 3D library. Substance 3D assets include thousands of models, everything from people to buildings, furniture to clothing and materials and textures galore. And if you want to create your own model, the latest addition to the Substance Suite is the perfect tool. Today, we are launching Substance Modeler, a breakthrough app that lets you create 3D objects from scratch, literally molding them out of virtual clay. And what you create in Modeler, it's just, it's really amazing. Like anything in your mind's eye, you're about to see in a minute. Let's take a quick look at Modeler in action, introduced by Giovanni Nockpill. Giovanni. Thank you, Scott. Hi, I'm Gio, and I'm excited to show you Adobe Modeler, which is our new 3D app that pretty much lets you ma manipulate geometry with a feel and tactility of clay. 
So here in desktop mode, you can use adjustable shapes to pretty much block in the primary forms of a character under the guidance of our intuitively uh, designed gizmo tool, pretty much. So now Modeler can seamlessly transition from desktop to VR, so I tend to kind of go to VR uh, a lot early on in the process because I love the expressivity that I can get out of it. In this mode, I have the freedom to use my hands and sculpt on the surface in a much more natural manner. So capturing rhythm and flow with these shapes are pretty much important to me as they define the personality and attitude of whatever character it is I'm building. In this case, a dragon. So the most, pretty much the most exciting thing about VR for me, you know, whenever uh, someone asks me, is the feeling that my sculpture is actually there. You know, it's hard to communicate that with uh, watching it on a flat screen as we are right now, but you know, true depth allows me to see the forms in the context of true scale. I can resize this as big as a school bus, and it'll really feel like the dragon is up there looking at me in you know, the same space that I'm occupying, which is really cool. Now, with the surfacing tools, as you can see here, I can add detail that flows in a natural and organic manner, using it more like an airbrush, which gives me a lot of nuance with my strokes. Also, the freedom to duplicate, grab, and place digital clay. These are all actions that would take so much longer in desktop, but in VR, it's so super quick and super natural. I can sculpt one of those clumps, and other copies can inherit that modification, pretty much. So from here, I can quickly explore different types of personalities and looks to this dragon in real time, and, you know, exploring Exploring design uh, hasn't really been as quick and easy for me as it has been now, you know, because of this. So there you have it. This is just a quick look at Modeler, but you can see how we're able to leverage VR for an intuitive and natural experience when creating 3D models. Thank you. So, uh, so thanks, Gio. So. One of the things that makes Model unique is this VR interface. What, what specifically does VR bring to the equation? Yeah, the, um, the ability to switch between both modes for me is what makes Modeler unique. Uh, you know, when I put on the headset, I could see the sculpture directly in front of me. I take it off, uh, desktop app does the same. And it's that seamless transition that pretty much allows me to choose the right uh, sort of mode for the given situation. You know, it's interesting because I'm, in, in VR, as I mentioned, I'm very expressive and dynamic, but when I'm in, in desktop mode, I'm very controlled and detailed. So Modeler satisfies both moods for me, I guess you can call so it. So now that you, you know, created this amazing dragon model, um, so what do, you, what do you do with this? What are the next steps to bring it into an immersive world? Yeah, there's many things I can do with it. Uh, for instance, I can take it into Substance uh, Painter, where I could apply uh, materials and textures, and then from there you can take it onto a, a, an app like Stager, where you could render it as a still image, where you can use Photoshop to augment it, paint over it, create an illustration, and lastly, you can give life and motion to it, uh, similar to what you see in, in AAA games and visual effects films through animation, pretty much. So Awesome. Well, thank you, Giovanni. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> so, uh, so we're, we're really excited about Modeler. It's available now on desktop and, of course, works with Meta uh, Quest 2 and Quest Pro VR headsets. So check it out. Um, and as Gio mentioned, there are so many things that you can do with your 3D model. You know, many companies are using model, uh, models you know, like this and Substance 3D, all the products, to create these industry lifelike and flexible scenes that are indistinguishable from traditional photography. So Wes McDermott is gonna show us how, using Substance Painter, the leading tool for applying the materials and textures that make 3D models look real, and Stager, which puts those 3D objects into a full scene. Wes. Thank you, Hello. So if you are looking to extend the work that you're doing in Photoshop and Illustrator, or just get into 3D, Substance Painter is the perfect tool for you. Let's take a look. So here I have Substance Painter open, and I'm working on this project for some rugged outdoor gear. The backpack and the materials, they're coming from Substance 3D Assets. 3D Assets is a content library that contains thousands of materials and models that you can use to get your Substance Painter project started quickly. 
And here, for the water bottle, I created that myself using Substance Modeler. Now, you can leverage content that you create in Photoshop or Illustrator and transform that into a 3D material. So here I have this graphic for outdoor adventures, and I want to take this and turn it into an embroidered patch that I can place on the front of my backpack. So let's jump back over here to Substance Painter and take a look. All right, so to get this started, I'm going to grab this embroidery material, and I'm going to place it right here on the front of the bag. Now, I'm going to take that Illustrator graphic, and I'm going to place it as the image input, and you'll see within a second, there is my patch. Let's zoom in and take a look. So the color values have been transformed into threads and stitching, and I have full control over this. So for example, if I come over and maybe change something like the thread size. I can do so by just adjusting the slider, and you'll see again within a few seconds that updates. It looks great, and that is the power of Substance Materials to transform your Illustrator content into a 3D material. So now, I would like to just bring my attention over here to my water bottle, and I'm going to start or focus on this sticker. Once again, I'm using a graphic from Illustrator, and, what I, and I've been able to apply this graphic using the sticker material, of course, downloaded from Substance 3D Assets. Now, what I'd like to do is add just a little bit of weathering. Let's take a look at how we can do this. So I'll select the layer here, and let's come down and, uh, you know, let's take a look at my properties. I'm going to increase my fold density here. And you'll notice here that I start to get some folds on the sticker. Gives it a bit more 3D in depth. That's pretty great. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is peel back the corner of this. Now, you're going to love this. This is awesome. This is my favorite feature here. So I'm just going to come over here to this slider, and I'm going to make an adjustment, and you can see that, whoa, look, that's awesome. I can completely just peel that sticker back and just wrinkle right up the graphic for that corner. Really, really nice. Now, the next thing I'd like to do, you know, while I'm here is, why don't I just throw in some damage to the sticker? So here, I'm just going to drag the slider, and we start to get some sticker damage. Well, you know, I'm having fun here. That's a little too intense. No problem. This is substance. We can always make changes. So here, let's just drop it back a little bit. There we go. Something nice and subtle. All right. There's my sticker, and I'm happy with that. Now, taking a look at the water bottle. Looks a little too clean. So here, I want to use the power of Substance Painter to add a little bit of edge damage. To do that, I'm going to grab this metal edgeware generator that ships with Painter, and I'm going to drag and drop it right here onto my layer stack. Now, you'll see we're starting to get an effect, but again, I can make changes to this. Let's come over to the properties, and I'm going to just increase this wear level. You can see I can dial this effect up and down, maybe add a little bit of grunge to this. Again, having a lot of fun, maybe a little too much, so let's just drop this back. We want it to be just a little bit subtle, and there we go. Now my bottle's starting to look like I want. I'm pretty happy with this. Now, one of the things that I love most about being an artist is the ability to tell a story and add character to the assets that I'm working on. And so for here for this water bottle, I'm going to imagine, you know, I was out on a hike and I had the bottle, I dropped it, it hit a rock, put a big dent on the front. Let's now take a look at how we can add that dent using Substance Painter. So here with, you know, Photoshop, we can, you know, paint with our brushes. However, in Substance Painter, our brushes allow me to paint directly on the 3D asset. So here I'm grabbing my dent brush. I'm going to come over here and just paint a quick stroke, and you'll see, bam, we put a big dent right here on the front of the bottle. So there it is. And if we take a look, you can see that that dent's actually pushing into the 3D surface. Also, take a look. That edge wear is also showing up. That's really, really awesome. However, what's even more cool about this is that it's completely non-destructive. Again, that's substance, non-destructive. So let's jump over here to the layer stack and take a look. I have this slider. Watch this. Now, this. Again, I love this. I drag the slider, and there we go. It completely disappears. That is amazing. You know, I really wish I had that slider for my car doors. They're dented all to pieces. Okay, so that's it. That is Substance Painter. I absolutely love this tool, and I know, I just know you guys are going to love it too. All right, but however, there's more fun to be had here. So that's Substance, right? Substance Painter. Now I need to texture these assets. So to do that, I'm going to jump over to another application called Substance Stager. And I can send all of this content right into Stager by going to File, Send to Substance 3D Stager, and you can see it here. Now let's jump over here to Stager. Now Stager is a tool that makes it very easy for me to, well, stage 3D assets into a scene so that I can render them for use in something like, you know, a marketing campaign or an advertisement. You can see here that I have the 3D content I just sent over from Painter, and then here in the background I have this 2D image, and we're going to composite these two guys together. 
So here, let's just go ahead and re-enable that. To start this off, I'm going to select my camera, and I'm going to click this Match Image button. Now, here, Stager's going to use some you know, crazy machine learning magic to create lights and match my camera perspective. So I'll click OK here and let Stager do its thing. And there we go. It's done it. Thanks a lot, Stager. Uh, you know, I like to thank the, the robots you know, for their AI work, just in case maybe they end up taking over someday. So here, I'm just going to reposition here my 3D object. Now I'm going to turn on here my uh, ray tracing or my render preview so I can get a good idea of my lighting. Now, let's jump over to my environment, and you can see here I have some lights, and I have my environment light. Scene's a little dark, so again, just simple slider adjustment, brightens my scene up, that's looking pretty good. Now, looking at this 2D image, I can see that my sunlight's coming here from this side of the screen. Now, what I'd like to do is take my sunlight and point it or reorient it to the, to the top corner of the bag. And I can do that by just grabbing this target option, and I'll click here at the top corner of the bag, and there we go, I reposition my light, also, we're going to just increase that intensity value. Let's pump it up. There we go. Looking great. However, I'm taking a look at this shadow, and it's looking a little harsh there, a little bit too, you know, computer-generated, as we'll say. Uh, and I don't like that. So here, I can adjust another slider here called cloudiness, and that's going to create this nice, realistic fall-off that I would expect in the real world. Awesome. Okay, so there's my render. Super happy with this. I could, you know, save this out as a 2D image, like a JPEG or a PNG, and, you know, just call it a day. However, if I want to take this even further, I can export this render as a PSD file and then take that into Photoshop for some more work. And I'm sure as you guys have all guessed, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So let's now jump over to Photoshop. So here we're in Photoshop, and I've just opened that PSD that I exported from Substance Stager. Now, Stager will separate all of my content into its own layer. So for example, here you can see that I have my 3D assets all available for me, and Stager also creates some additional layers. Let's take a look here. So we have things like a material selection mask, and I also have this depth pass, and these are going to just help aid me in this compositing process. So as I said earlier, if you're looking to leverage content that you create in Photoshop and Illustrator, or just get into 3D, the Substance ecosystem provides everything you need to create amazing 3D imagery. I invite you to jump in and check it out. We can't wait to see what you create. Thank you. So thanks, Wes. So that scene Wes created can now be used in many different ways, right? It can be used in a website, in e-commerce, as a catalog image. But as powerful as that workflow is, it's really just scratching the surface of 3D's potential. 3D is literally going to transform how we work and how we live. Now, some of that transformation will be in these ambitious, immersive, all-encompassing metaverses, right? Worlds unlike the likes of which we've ever seen before. And some of it will change our everyday lives via augmented reality, on our phones at first and on other devices in the future. Information that pops into view when you need it. New ways of viewing products in a physical space that defy the laws of physics in transformative ways to work together remotely. The Adobe community, including many of you, are at the forefront of this new medium. So let's take a little look at how teams are creating the future. The really incredible moment that we're in right now is that we're seeing the beginning of this new era. For artists, the whole world is just going to open up. For a designer to embrace this new technology and, and 3D in a wider sense is essential. That's really what this whole transformation is about for us. We want to make products that fit people and that people love with this virtual try-on. You can take the product with augmented reality into your space and like see it and walk around it. So this is really win-win for both the customer and us as a brand. We get much closer to our consumers and that we actually have the opportunity to build a real community and a community really lives in, in both directions, right? You really want to have a superior product experience and that 3D can help a lot. Everyone knows Ben & Jerry's as a 2D illustration star. We have now taken that, put it into the 3D world. We have moved on up. We've, we can do so much more with it. It was a cool challenge to say, okay, here's this amazing brand, this playful brand. We've got augmented reality to use here. What can we do? 
we can use this augmented reality experience in a gamified way where they're understanding what goes into the tub in terms of ingredients and then get it delivered to your home. These students are digital natives. They're able to realize their vision pretty fast. Every student coming out of the industrial design program knows some major piece of 3D design software. Product design for me is a humanizing experience. It helps me connect with people. I find the metaverse to be the expansion of our human reality. I like that physical aspect that I could actually like have my body and my creativity transfer onto what I'm creating. It feels so much more intuitive than like being behind a computer trying to model something. Product design is all about improvement. It's all about change. You're not limited by manufacturing. It's just truly out there. It's limitless. It's endless. I'm massively excited of everything that is happening in the technology space. It doesn't have to be virtual reality, it can be augmented reality, it can be mixed reality. But what is clear to us is that those virtual layers, digital layers, will be omnipresent. Our designers, they love it. We want to be part of the change and this is all done in 3D, so 3D is really the future for everything. <laughs> okay, exciting stuff. So much of the future is going to be driven by 3D. So if you haven't begun working in 3D, we encourage you to give it a shot in the coming year. In fact, if you're new to Substance, you can get access to the entire suite for free for a month, and we're doing a 50% off opportunity for the next year. So go to substance3d.adobe.com to check it out. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground this morning. Let's do a quick recap. Creative Cloud is helping you create with speed and ease with the new Adobe Express, and the newest features and AI superpowers throughout the apps that you use every day. We're streamlining creative collaboration with Share for Review and Frame.io, and we're fueling the 3D creative revolution with the Substance 3D suite, including our newest edition, Substance 3D Modeler. So many, many features and some new products in Creative Cloud, we couldn't cover them all. Let's take a quick look at some of the highlights. So before we end this morning, I do have to just say how wonderful it is to be back in person again. Should we, should we do this again next year? What do you think? All right. It's a date. Um, do I have any Adobe colleagues in the audience, the people and teams that are behind these products? Can you just stand up for just a second? Come on, Team Adobe. There you are. You know? These are, these are folks, these are folks that are always up for a challenge, that want to dream and also want to consistently anchor ourselves with what all of you need. So thank you to the teams uh, for all the work this year. 
The creative world is truly a community unlike any other, and it is really your work that inspires people, including all of us at Adobe, and becomes the foundation for the next generation of creators. We inspire each other, we learn from one another, and we also know how to have a good time. So if you're here in person in LA, my colleagues and I would just love to you know, catch up with you in the pavilion um, or around over the next couple of days. So I hope you'll enjoy seeing old friends. I hope you'll make some new friends. I hope we'll see you tomorrow for day two. We have just an amazing day lined up. And one last reminder, do not miss the always fun sneaks tomorrow night with the hilarious Kevin Hart, who will join Adobe's Brie Alexander to guide us through some of the wild, new, deep, crazy, crazy tech in the Adobe Labs. So you will not want to miss that. We will see you there. And in the meantime, have an amazing Max. Thanks again for being with us.